The Weatherall Institute for Molecular Medicine plays an incredibly important role. It's one of the most influential and important uh, medical research institutes we have in the UK. The MRC Wetherill Institute of Molecular Medicine is a leading disease research centre specialising in molecular and cell biology. Established in 1989 at the University of Oxford, its pioneering approach over the last 25 years has fostered a wide range of significant scientific breakthroughs, leading it to be considered one of the foremost research centres in the world. By the 1970s, it was quite clear that molecular biology and, and related fields were going to be a key part of medicine and medical research in the future. So a building became available on this site and I approached the faculty board and suggested that we set up an institute. I approached the Medical Research Council and they sent a, a, a group of high-powered scientists to, to, to look us over to see if we were fit to do this kind of thing. Uh, amazingly, they said we were. When we set it up, um, it probably was the only place in the world uh, with, with, with those kind of facilities. Extensive funding has created a large centre of excellence. The Institute currently houses over 400 scientific, technical and support staff, in addition to approximately 100 students. Three large floors of research laboratories are complemented by a central meeting and social area, a library and seminar and conference rooms. Well, when I became director, the first thing was I, I wanted to um, expand the space to increase some, to, to relieve some of the congestion. The building was so successful it was overfull. It had become clear that, that technologies were advancing fast and everyone needed access to to the best and most up-to-date technology. So I'm, I'm a great believer in collaboration, that, that you can, with good collaborations, you can go much faster. So I think this, this was one of the first, uh, this, this kind of institute, and uh, there have been lots of um, uh, similar kinds of institutes coming up, and not least in Oxford, so I think the model is seen as quite successful. The Institute has been instrumental in understanding the biological processes of disease. Testimony to this are the many awards and accolades that have been earned. Fifteen Institute scientists have become Fellows of the Royal Society. And in 2010, Sir David Wetherill received the Lasker Koshland Award for Special Achievement in Medical Science. I can't imagine a more exciting time to be doing medical research. And over the last 40 years, there have been dramatic changes in our understanding of uh, the basics underlying medicine. And I think that the, for the last 25 years, the doctors and scientists at the Weatherall Institute of Molecular Medicine have been at the heart of this revolution. Well, it was here we first learnt about how abnormalities in the genes that make the red cell pigment haemoglobin cause the world's most common forms of inherited anemia. And as a result of this, we can now help families uh, with these awful diseases, which often require lifelong blood transfusion. It was also in this institute that scientists first discovered how the immune system recognises and eradicates viruses. More recently, scientists here have worked out how the HIV AIDS virus disguises itself to avoid the immune system. And our colleagues who look after sick children were also instrumental in developing the vaccines that, uh, against the bugs that cause meningitis. Scientists of the WIM have made major breakthroughs in understanding how the body senses oxygen uh, and how cancers may develop new ways to obtain the oxygen they need to grow. So there are many more examples of great breakthroughs at the WIM, uh, including diseases of the kidney, the heart, the muscle and those diseases that affect normal development. Although a vast range of human disease is covered by the Weatherall Institute, much of the research focuses on five key themes. So there's a growing awareness that many of the most prevalent uh, human diseases, such as cancer, uh, um, cardiovascular diseases, uh, obesity, type 2 diabetes, uh, uh, have a strong association, a strong link uh, with uh, uh, inflammation. And in fact, with long-lasting and chronic uh, inflammation. And in terms of science that goes on in the unit, uh, although we are mainly focused uh, on uh, the 
identification of antigen-specific uh, immune responses, we are paying much greater attention to the interplay between antigen-specific immune responses and the link with the innate immunity and inflammation. So our body is composed of tissues and these tissues are composed of cells and a stem cell is really a parental cell that gives rise to all the other cells within a tissue. It's thought that in many cancers the problems really start with stem cells going wrong. We're trying to understand the genetic changes, the epigenetic changes that are acquired in a person during the course of their life that deregulate the functioning of normal stem and progenitor cells to give rise to this leukemic process. So uh, what we're interested in is really two simple questions. How do you normally make blood and how does that go wrong in patients with severe forms of anemia or leukemia? And the sort of principle that we work on is the fact that you're born with a set of stem cells in your bone marrow and they divide and multiply and form all the uh, mature cells that you see in the, in the peripheral blood. And it may surprise you to know that every second you make two or three million red cells. So what we're trying to do is to understand how the genes are switched on and off during that process to make a stem cell mature and form the elements of the blood. And then we also work in close contact with our clinical colleagues in the hospital who are looking after patients with these severe forms of, of blood diseases. In all probability, every family in the UK and almost worldwide will have a member affected by cancer. The WIM fosters fantastic collaborations between surgeon scientists like myself cancer clinician scientists and basic scientists to be able to ask fundamental questions about cancers, to need to utilize a wealth of um, techniques and the WIM offers that very nicely. So a lot of the work we do is on a, a disorder called craniosynostosis. We're interested in trying to find uh, new genetic causes of craniosynostosis and here in Oxford we have fantastic resources that enable us to uh, do all this work on house so that's both the instruments uh, for the sequencing mm -hmm. and then um, the uh, computing power and the bioinformatics knowledge to help us analyze those data once we've got the sequences back. The craniofacial unit um, is actually led uh, by two plastic surgeons uh, but they're part of a much wider team that includes uh, surgeons, um, other therapists such as speech therapists and of course the clinical geneticist. But it means that we can put our heads together, different sources of expertise um, and the, the families get an opinion in a, a, a single consultation. We're working on multiple sclerosis and uh, we are in particular trying to get leverage from genome-wide association studies and the whole genome sequencing studies of patients and controls. And uh, we're trying to understand in detail what various disease-associated uh, SNPs, what they mean in functional terms. And we're trying to translate that information into an understanding of how we can treat MS in the future. So we're interested in trying to understand skin disease, in particular atopic eczema, which causes um, uh, inflammatory disease of the skin affecting 20 to 30 percent of children in the UK. It can be associated with asthma and rhinitis and food allergy. We know that filaggrin deficiency is associated with disease and filaggrin is expressed in the skin and is thought to be important in barrier function of the skin but it's not clear how filaggrin insufficiency then leads to skin inflammation and we're trying to understand the pathways of that skin inflammation, what cells are involved ultimately to try and identify new targets for therapeutic intervention or disease prevention. Iron deficiency is uh, bad in children, it halts their development 
don't get enough red blood cells, you can get um, growth impairment and so on. So what we really want to do is to try and give as much iron as you can to the people who really need it. But if you give iron to the wrong people, they run the risk of developing extra infections. So we're trying to develop a way of giving iron to children so they don't develop infections, but their anemia improves. The Wetherill Institute's success can be credited to the way in which it supports research. For example, working at the molecular level generates a vast amount of data, which is managed by the Computational Biology Research Group. Previously it took 10 years to generate um, one human genome, whereas now we can generate that in a couple of days. It's worth mentioning that everything we do is in close collaboration with the scientists at the WIM. We really provide a, a one-stop shop uh, for all the bioinformatics at the IMM. It basically gives a free genome of data to anybody who's working in that genome, in human or in mouse or whatever. And if they find something interesting, there's now a wealth of data generated by other researchers which backs up their re and informs their research. That's essentially the big advantage for all of us. The Institute has also invested heavily in imaging so that cell processes can be seen in much greater detail. We can, with optical microscopy, study the living cell, and that's what it's all about. We want to see how things move and develop when a cell is, for example, infected. What we really need is a, a well-maintained core imaging facility that uh, everyone has access to and that has a broad range of different types of imaging systems to cover a, a broad range of activities. And now we're funding from the Wilson Foundation and the research councils, this is what we've been able to achieve. We're living in very exciting times uh, for imaging. It, this is a threshold that we're just stepping over. It's very, very exciting. Great attention is also paid to the working culture. A key feature is the large coffee area that promotes cross-disciplinary collaboration in relaxed surroundings. There is a strong focus on career development and mentoring, particularly in promoting excellence in graduate students, postdoctorates, and junior group leaders. As a result, the Institute attracts high caliber young scientists from around the world. Equally important are the regular internal seminars and the annual open day, where the Institute's current fields of research are presented. I think uh, the Weatherall is uh, the ultimate institute full of all the scientists that suit my research. Well, it's a, I think it's a really friendly institute and also there's a really collaborative spirit. And that's why it's so important to have an institute where you put bench, bench to bench, scientist, clinician, uh, working together, developing a common language and a common enthusiasm, I think, together. It's like, I don't think there's no substitute for having everybody in the same physical building. The MRC Weatherall Institute of Molecular Medicine houses a thriving and dynamic environment in which to carry out research. A renowned centre of excellence, it continues to pioneer exploration into complex and important human diseases, generating revolutionary treatments that improve patient well-being. With 25 years of celebrated achievement to its name, the Weatherall Institute continues to pave the way in highly complex and rewarding fields of scientific research.